So football is back, guys. And we got you covered at the DraftKings Sportsbook. All the action, all the games, every single play, we're trying to get you in on it at the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. So here's the deal. We're trying to get you in on the game. Y'all all act like y'all know everything, right? So show me. All new customers bet only $5 or more and get $200 in bonus bets instantly at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Find your favorite team on the DraftKings Sportsbook. Bet on your favorite team. Let's go. I mean, it's easy and it's fun. I love using the DraftKings Sportsbook. But what about us, DC? What about the people that have been with you? Okay, we got something for you. Nobody's missing out on the actions at DraftKings. Every single game day this September. So not only are the new customers getting hooked up, but all of our customers are getting hooked up with two new offers every single game this September. So get in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use my promo code DCTV to get started. All new customers, all you got to do is bet $5 or more and get $200 in bonus bets instantly by using my promo code DCTV at the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Let's go. Note UFC was a... Unbelievable success. What a fantastic night from the T-Mobile Arena. I spoke to so many people, just text messages over the course of the night. People were blown away with the atmosphere. It was honestly pay-per-view level. From the fighting to the crowd, it didn't feel any different to me. I felt like I was at a numbered event. It was that good. The Mexican fans really showed out tonight. Guys, they had these jerseys that say Noche UFC as the boy Miles breaks it down again. I tried to get one three times. I went to the products department. They didn't have none. Then all of a sudden, the product department says, we put more out, DC. Go up there. They didn't want to give me none free. By the time we got up there to get one of the jerseys, they were sold out again. The pride in this building tonight was crazy, and all the Mexican fighters felt it. Guys. This fight car was built around Mexican Independence Day and, you know, Alexa Grasso is from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Canelo Alvarez is from there and generally one of those big time boxers headlines this weekend in Las Vegas and honestly, the UFC feels like it should be headlining this weekend every single year because this place was on fire. By the time we got to the main event, nuts. Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko put on an absolute classic. Two women fighting at the top of their division and really setting the standard for what female mixed martial arts is and can be down the line. If, if women aren't proven to this level right now, I can't wait for what happens three, five years down the road. Valentina came out with a different game plan this week. All week she said she was mad. She was angry. She intended to dominate. And she fought like she thought that she could do that. She fought behind a beautiful jab. She fought behind beautiful combination punches. And once again, she showed that she can control Alexa Grasso on the ground. She showed that she has that ability to be able to not only take Grasso down, but hold it down in spots. Because I think what really dictated the fight as it went longer was Grasso's ability to get up once she got taken down. She would get taken down, she would get right back to her feet. Round one, I thought Valentina fought beautifully. She won the round behind her striking. She got a takedown late and controlled it. Round two, Alexa Grasso fought really, really well. She dropped Valentina Shevchenko. Now, Valentina took her down, took her down, and she was able to control her, but not do much damage. So they still scored the round four, Alexa Grasso, which made me feel good about the judging because it made me feel like they got it right, right? Regardless of she get her getting taken down, they put the onus on the damage and the control that Alexa Grasso had in round two, round three. Valentina goes back to the wrestling. She controls round three with the wrestling round four. Two judges scored it for Valentina. One scored it for Alexa Grasso. I myself had the round for Alexa Grasso. Why? Because she was able to land those good knees, 
got a takedown, landed some ground and pound. Now, Valentina was fighting very well to start that round, but then Alexa Grasso fought her way back into there, and only one judge gave it to her. Canedro, I think her name is, Junichiro Canedro, gave the round to Alexa Grasso, round four. I thought she won that round. Round five is where things get a little crazy. Round five is where shit gets crazy. Mike Bell scores the fifth round for Alexa Grasso. Let's be honest. The start of round five was Alexa Grasso's round. She was winning that round. And then she gets taken down at the end of the round with about two minutes to go. And sure, she gets dominated. She got beat, ground and pound, she, some submission attempts, and she handily lost that round. Handily lost that round. I get in the octagon, I'm waiting to interview whoever won. Because remember, if I'm scoring the fight in my mind, I think that Alexa Grasso is gonna retain. But I get something, it's a draw. Anytime guys, Bruce Buffer takes a while to come back into the octagon, you should get worried. Because it doesn't take that long for the scorecards to come in. So I started to get a little worried when it took Bruce a while to get into the octagon. It's a draw. And it felt to me like Mike Bell, I don't know what he could have watched to score that fifth round, a 10-8 for Alexa Grasso. Now, this, she won the round. No doubt about it, she won the round. But a 10-8 is just, it, it is honestly one of the worst scorecards that I've seen in a really long time. And think about how an event can leave you feeling so like, Weird, especially on a night when you saw Edgar Chavez and Daniel Lacerda called a no contest or no decision because an official uh, made a call where he jumped in a little too early. And honestly, I, I like Chris Tagnoni. He's a wrestling coach. And he asked me inside the octagon, he said, what did you guys think? I, I said, in his face, I said, I, I thought you made a mistake. I said, you got to wait. He goes, well, I grabbed his arm a couple times and third time it kind of dropped I go I understand everything's moving fast you're working in real time but I thought he made a mistake so from Mike Bell's judging that 10-8 absurd Tanya only made a mistake on that call but it wasn't as egregious as the Mike Bell scorecard to score that 10-8 literally people were astounded at that scorecard and honestly the crowd reacted in a way where they thought that their champion lost but then they announced the and still and everything felt like they kind of went back to celebrate. Um, got to run it back. We got to have these two women fight again. And I feel like every time we match them up, we are in line for a tremendous fight between these two. In the co-main event, Jack Della Maddalena fought Kevin Holland, and he won a split decision. It was the biggest fight of Della Maddalena's career. And he stepped up to the challenge against Kevin Holland, who fought a good fight himself. And I don't know if anyone would be upset regardless of who won the fight. But it doesn't feel like anybody got robbed with Jack Della Maddalena winning the fight. He was very responsible with his defenses and he landed good shots. Kevin Holland also had his moments. Raul Rosas Jr. came back from the first time he ever lost in his career and had one of the greatest performances. He destroyed Terrence Mitchell. And it was phenomenal to see because you never know how a kid at 18 years old will respond. With that being said, I feel like I didn't do him justice by bringing up the loss as the first question. I feel like I should have led with something better opposed to how he got over the adversity. Now for me, I've dealt with a ton of adversity. So I want to know that, but in reality, I should have been in there to uplift Raul Rosas Jr. I shouldn't have brought up his losses. So for that, my bad, I shouldn't have done it. My apologies to Raul. He fought beautifully tonight. What a tremendous performance by that young man. And it shows that regardless of age, you can get back on the horse and correct things. And now it feels like, once again, it's all systems go for Raul Rosas Jr. Uh, we saw Lupe Godinez has the best performance of his career. We saw Roman Kopilov once again knock somebody out. This guy's now knocked four guys out in a row in the middleweight division. Welcome back, Tracy Cortez. You know, she has gone through a lot over the course of the last year, personally and professionally. We spoke to her in the fighter meeting and she was crying. 
because it took her, it was such a hard road for her to get back. She fought in a war tonight against Jasmine Jazz Davizius, and she got the job done. So overall, guys, a great night of fights from the Apex. Noche UFC was a tremendous success, and I hope this becomes a yearly thing because the UFC fans deserve it. What an atmosphere. Uh, we got to show my boy Cain Velasquez uh, winning the UFC championship and really becoming the first Mexican champion. He wasn't Mexican born, but he was the first Mexican champion, a first generation Mexican superstar. Brandon Moreno joined. It, it was just a fantastic night to celebrate a historical weekend for the UFC and for Mexico. Um, guys, that's it for me. I got a couple weekends off. I hope you miss me. I hope you miss me. Maybe you won't. Or maybe you'll just be happy that I'm gone. Until next time, guys, like, subscribe. Hey, a million views in a week last week. I appreciate you. Till next time. Peace.